that uh, even though I'm from away and have only been visiting uh, the state of Maine over the last five, uh, six plus years, uh, five, six times a year coming up to do the pastors and some of the congregations, uh, I actually have had a connection to the bath of the Church of the Nazarene that goes back to uh, 1981. You would not know this, uh, but the connection is through one of your pastors uh, of the past, Reverend Roland Stanford. I follow Roland Stanford in the Edison, New Jersey Church of the Nazarene, uh, when it was called Edison First Church, now called Edison New Beginnings. He was not my immediate predecessor, but he was two pastors before me and was known as the Sunday School Pastor. He had an incredible ability to attract, he and his family, his wife together, to attract children and made me think about the kids' place. Roland would be uh, very proud, I believe, to see what you've attempted here and what you will continue to attempt here. So that's my connection. I've known about the Bath Church for a long, long time. It's just my first time to be in it, and first time to be with you. But it won't be the last time. And as I thought about Roland Stanford in that moment of the past and his ability to, to reach children, the Sunday school at the Edison Church had over 100 children in it at one time during his ministry. It was the largest that the Sunday school had ever been, even under ministries, including my own afterwards. It was an amazing, he was an amazing pastor. And his legacy continues to live on in the lives of many, many, many people who's, who were changed as children and who are now adults with children of their own, perhaps even some grandchildren of their own. So when I think of the kid's place and its potential and the fact that it needs staffing, I'm thinking about the future. I want to bless that future. So would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, this is an amazing day, 105 years of celebration. There's not very many churches in the Church of the Nazarene that can uh, say that. Uh, but I've been privileged to be a district superintendent for uh, more than one of them. On the Pittsburgh district where I served, we had uh, three churches that predated the organization of the Church of the Nazarene and came into the Church of the Nazarene early, just like Bath, joining their, their people, their buildings, to this brand new denomination called Church of the Nazarene, <clears throat> all because there was an evangelist sent out from the 1907 General Assembly of the Church of the Nazarene that was held in Chicago a year before the official birthday of the church in 1908 at uh, uh, Pilot Point, Texas. From Chicago, that very first General Assembly, Dr. Phineas Brzee commissioned an evangelist to go from the East Coast all the way to Iowa. That was his district, one district. Many, many states, thousands of miles to find congregations that were in agreement with the doctrine of holiness that the Church of the Nazarene espoused, and to start new congregations in cities where there was no holiness church. And this evangelist did an amazing job. And he discovered churches like Lincoln Place, Pennsylvania, Mount Washington, Pennsylvania, Bath, Maine. And left behind, after just a few days, sometimes maybe a week or two, left behind a nucleus of a congregation that has remained steady through the years, sometimes larger, sometimes smaller, but always faithful. 
The Bible calls it a remnant. A remnant that God says He will never let die. He will never let it disappear. That this remnant will always be the kernel of influence, the kernel of what He will do. It is the promise, in fact, of what He will do in the days ahead. Because He, is, he you, God, are a preserving God but you're always also a perpetuating God. You don't just preserve us to be a museum that people can come and look at us once in a while and point at us, but also you perpetuate us, you motivate us, you help us to grow, you help us to reach out, you put within our hearts a desire and a love that is that for this community, that only comes from you because it's your love. It is the love you have for these people. It's the love you have for lost people. And now as we hear how Maine is the number one state in the United States and Canada with the most unchurched, unclaimed people, three out of every four people do not have any affiliation with any religious group at all. Every three people out of four that we meet need Jesus. Every three people out of every four we meet need a church family. And they need to be loved. They need an answer for the issues and concerns and challenges of their life. They need hope. They need healing. I pray, Father, that the Bath Church of the Nazarene will be that place for them. That the, that the outreach of this church may start with just one or two or three, but it will spread exponentially as those three or four begin to reach their network of friends. And before long, Father, there, were, there would be dozens of people and then hundreds of people touched in the days ahead by the back church of the Nazarene by its staff by its pastor by the congregation and by the people who will come to find us as their church home in the days ahead for this future we pray and we ask and we pray that it will be done according to your will by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.